what's going on, everybody? Good evening and welcome to Pro Football Focus here on rotogrinders.com. I am Dan Bach filling in on the Thursday night show. I had Wednesday night off on football, guys. We ended a week early, but uh, I'm happy to pinch it for Britt Devine here today and uh, chat with good old Tyler and Scott of Pro Football Focus about this week 17. And uh, fellas, great to be on the show, but uh, I feel like I... I I should have just gone gruff for the last couple of weeks to keep up with you guys, man. But uh, I guess somebody has to represent the Brit Divine baby face, right? <laughs> but uh, all right, well, let's get a few things. Let's talk about week 16. Um, hope everybody out there had a, a good holiday this past week. Um, how did your guys' lineups turn out? Scott, start with you. Oh, uh, last week was actually the worst DFS week of my life. Um, I played like 6.5 X my typical bankroll and uh, won just $15 back. Uh, I bubbled pretty much everywhere. Um, yeah, I don't know. A lot of regrets, uh, bad process on to week 17. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, do you have anything more encouraging than that? Uh, cash games were a cakewalk for me, but GPPs, I was the same with Scott. I was a swing and a miss. I had zero Todd Gurley, one lineup with Larry Fitz, and it was in a dead lineup trying to salvage a Case Keenum, Adam Thielen stack from Saturday. It was a rough week for GPPs for me, but hoping to do a lot better week 17. I was a little nervous heading into the week. There's a lot of news to pay attention to with this being almost like a preseason-esque type slate, um, but I'm feeling pretty good now. I feel like we've I have a lot of news heading into the week, knowing which teams will and will not be uh, contending, which teams may be benching some players. And I feel like we have a pretty good grasp on it heading into the weekend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was in that same boat. I actually had one lineup or maybe two that had the Stanton with uh, Fitzgerald and then with Todd Gurley. I mean, that actually fit pretty good. There was uh, an easy build to get there. Um, and the funny thing was that wasn't the one that I put in the big, you know, high dollar Q that they had on DraftKings. I was right on that cut line. I was that, you know, when oh. Dallas got the ball on the one yard line, didn't give it to Zeke to score a touchdown. Uh, you know, that min cash is a big min cash. And there I was <laughs> Christmas Eve. <laughs> Don't tell the big man upstairs, but in church, looking at my phone, it was not one of the moments that I felt great about myself. And maybe the fact that I checked the scores, the why it didn't turn out. I don't know. Uh, but nonetheless, we regroup and get to week 17 here. And this is a big one for a few teams, means nothing for others. And we're going to open the show a little bit differently and kind of talk about each of the upcoming games and who are playing for what in these games. We'll still do studs, duds, and value, but we're, you know, we've got no Thursday name, Thursday game to talk about. So let's start out with Packers and Lions. This is a game, uh, Tyler, where we don't really have much of anything up for grabs with these two teams and we've already seen that a lot of these wide receivers in this matchup certainly from the uh, Packers side are going to be out quick thoughts on this game and in potential options at all here yeah Detroit got eliminated last week from the playoffs uh, I still think there's a lot of fantasy goodness to go around here especially with the Lions receivers really like their matchups against Green Bay secondary and on the other other side of the ball I kind of like Jamal Williams as a sneaky play against this uh, Detroit front seven that's allowed a ton of rushing work over the last uh, I don't know eight or nine weeks just a ton yeah and Williams is uh, he was in like 90 percent of the snaps last week Aaron Jones I think is hurt there Scott and you know, we've seen him in these situations where he can suddenly get a large amount of workload and things really turn out well if you ended up rostering him. Now, it wasn't each of the last two weeks, but before that, this guy was was pretty dynamite. And I think he's going to have that backfield to himself with not a lot of options there for Hundley. Uh, yeah, so he was... Um... I guess fairly disappointing for fantasy owners last week, but he still finished as one of only four running backs to play on at least 90% of his team's running back snaps. Uh, he ranks eighth among running backs in expected fantasy points over the last five weeks of the season. That's including the Aaron Rodgers game where we know Green Bay tends to go a little less run heavy. Aaron Jones is not expected to play. Um, the Lions are a bottom five defense and schedule adjusted fantasy points per game to opposing running backs over the last five weeks and over the course of a full season. I think he's going to go somewhat overlooked, Jamal Williams, uh, but I do like him a lot as one of 
my favorite value plays, though. I, I should mention there's going to be a lot of great running back value this week, and, and I'm going to chase all of it, I think. Uh, Texans at Colts, another game that's meaningless, but you also got kind of a narrative here. I think that Chuck Pagano realizes he's done. Uh, he mentioned it's going to be their last rodeo the other day. And the Texans, you know, Bill O'Brien, I think, is safe. I think he's going to come back next season. But he might be without DeAndre Hopkins. Now, initially, it looked like he was going to be out. Then a little bit later on the day today, uh, Scott, they said that he is going to be a game-time decision. Obviously, nothing really up for grabs in this game. Um, if, if Nuke would sit, do you have any interest in Fuller or in this game in general? Uh, what do you think? Texans, Colts. Uh, I I'd, I'd probably have no interest uh, in anyone on Houston's side of the ball. Um, maybe T.Y. Hilton for Indianapolis. Houston's allowing the third most fantasy points per game on deep passes. Um, T.Y. Hilton, we know, is uh, um, uh, one of the best deep threats in the league, though he's not really been used in that capacity this season with Jacoby Brissett under center. Um, he also isn't as much in the slot as he was last year, but he still uh, leads the team in routes run and targets from the slot. He'll get Kareem Jackson, who leads all cornerbacks and fantasy points allowed. Uh, I also like Frank Gore quite a bit. Uh, he's seen uh, a tremendous workload in recent weeks. He ranks fifth in carries since week eight. Uh, Houston ranks fifth worst in schedule adjusted fantasy points per game to running backs. Also, he needs just 139 rushing yards uh, to be the fifth running back ever with 10 1,000 rushing yards season. So there might be some incentive there to give him a little extra play this week. Uh, but like I said before, I think there's just a ton of running back value. So he's not going to be someone I'm going to have too much exposure to. Tyler, do you, th uh, it's kind of a tangent here. Is Frank Gore a hall of famer? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I think he is without a doubt. He's just been crushing it ever since he entered the league. Like Scott mentioned, that's a heck of a stat. 9,000 yeah. yard seasons. Uh, could be a 10th. I don't know. I don't know if he can get 130 in one game, <laughs> there. Uh, but yeah. It's just never been like a – like I guess he's never – I never felt him to be like a truly dominant player in the – like he was never the best running back in the league, I think, at any point in time. And you could make the argument, was he ever like a top three running back in the league at any point in time? But from a longevity standpoint, I guess it's there, and we've got to consider him. But I don't know. My standards for the Hall of Fame are a little bit high, and – uh I, I, he just doesn't feel like a Hall of Famer. Although Scott, you feel I, I have a feeling like you think he is too. I, I just was durability is a skill. Just the fact that okay. he's That's in true. the league at this point in his career. Uh, I, th I think he's a Hall of Famer, but I agree with you, Dan. I think that's like a legitimate argument you could make where uh, a lot of voters look and want to see uh, your best three or five year peak versus someone else's best three to five year peak. And, and in that regard, Frank Gore doesn't really stand out, but just looking at the full sample, what he's done is really impressive. All right. Bears Vikings, Tyler, uh, the bears obviously not playing for anything, but the Vikings, uh, they are definitely still need to show up and play this game because if the uh, Vikings would lose, the Saints would lose, and the Panthers win, the Vikings could even fall all the way out of the two seed and not even get a bye. And I think, you know, I really looked to Vegas a good bit this week, even though this is a tough week even for them to handicap these games. But they've got Minnesota installed as a, you know, ridiculously strong favorite here at, what, 13 points in some places, 11 and a half, 12 points other places against a Chicago team here feels like uh, Minnesota is going to going to go all out and, and play their starters here. Yeah, I agree. I think, well, if they win, they clinch that first round by, which is huge. Yeah. The Eagles already wrapped up the number one seed. So they're just going for the number two, but I think that's a big, big goal for them to get They're 13 point favorites currently that what I'm seeing, and we should see a ton of Latavius Murray. Uh, I think just a lot of carries here against this bears team where they're, they're just trying to run out the clock, get the W nothing fancy. Uh, what, what do we make of, Adam Thielen here, Scott, you know, this is a guy who's been under 10 fantasy points three of the last four games. And he's, but he's also a guy who's a pro bowler who's had an unbelievable season, a breakout year. Is there any chance? I mean, I don't love this matchup. Chicago has been good enough on defense, but I also feel like there's, you know, he's going to get back going here sooner rather than later. 
is this the spot for him? I mean, because I look at other players, their salaries have dropped when they've struggled. Adam Thielen is the same price he's been the last couple of weeks on DraftKings, and I can't really figure out why he hasn't fallen like A.J. Green or Mike Evans or other guys. Uh, so, so, um, you know, the, yeah, like you said, the matchup's not great, but Chicago, uh, is one of like the worst or has one of the most egregious splits, uh, in points allowed, uh, when at home versus when on the road. So they're a lot weaker on the road. Um, Adam Thielen's only five receptions away from reaching, uh, another plateau in his, uh, bonus incentive laden bonuses uh he'll get a million dollars if he has oh, five catches that's a lot uh, yeah I mean, yeah i, th- I think you're right for a million dollars like there's no way case keenum does not give him get him five catches like there's zero chance of that but what i what i think is super interesting is that uh so chicago's above average to slot wide receivers which is where thielen runs the majority of his routes they're above average to left wide receiver which is, um, you know, where Thielen spends the rest of his time when he's not in the slot, but they're allowing the most to right wide receivers as well as the highest percentage of wide receiver fantasy points allowed to right wide receivers. And that's where Stefan Diggs runs about 52% of his routes. So really the matchup dictates uh, it's going to be better for Diggs this week. I'm not really too high on either, uh, but both are definitely in play. I think they're interesting on a values or on a a GPP side of things, Tyler, like no, nobody's talking about, about Minnesota at all. Like everybody's Carolina, Atlanta, New Orleans, you know, Tennessee, nobody's talking about Minnesota here. I I think you can get them at low ownership and in a pretty sneaky good spot uh, considering what they have to play for and the bears are cashing in. Yeah, I've been chasing Diggs all year. I'm going to continue through week 17. Not going to stop now. Well, why, he did I'm it week one. Like, why not week 17? You exactly. Know? Why not? Yeah, bar start, str- yeah. <laughs> start strong and strong. Let's do it. Uh, all right, next one for us is the Jets and the Patriots. Patriots are just absolutely mo- monstrous favorites of this one. I think like 16 points. Um, and clearly, if they win this, uh, they are going to be the um, – Patriots are going to be the number one seed – and we also got some news that Pittsburgh looks like they're going to be sitting, uh, you know, Le'Veon Bell and Ben Roethlisberger. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But uh, the Patriots again here, Tyler, I mean, there's so much value out there. You know, we're going to run into some chalk here, I think, with this team, certainly in the name of Rob Gronkowski. But uh, what do we think of Brady? What do we think of the other components here of the Patriots in this game? So they clinch. Uh, home field advantage if they win uh, yeah. or if Pittsburgh loses. I think that's the way I've got it understood. Yeah. Um, and we've seen before New England isn't afraid to keep their foot on the gas, go for as many fantasy, go for as many points as possible and just ensure they get the W. I won't see it. It wouldn't shock me at all to see them go for that this week. And I think every Patriot is in play as such. Do you have a favorite there? I mean, let's, let's tell Gronk aside because tight end kind of sucks this week and He's pretty obvious, but let's taking Gronk out of the equation, Tyler. Well, how do you rank the other options for New England here? Well, it depends on injury news, like especially at the running back position. Deion Lewis, he answered the call last week, 35 plus fantasy points. He hit the bonus in 100 rushing yards, picked up a score on the ground and on the air. Um, if Burke, I saw Burkhead was a DNP on Wednesday. Uh, we still need to monitor the health of everybody, but it's a really good matchup here against the Jets, who have allowed the ninth most fantasy points over the past four weeks to opposing backs. Um, Lewis is just a versatile back. He can do it all. I really, really like him. He's probably my top play here uh, outside of Gronk. And I don't think Burkhead plays, Scott. I mean, why not not play him here and then give him extra rest and then be fully healthy here for the playoffs? Like, I don't think he makes them that much better of a team. I mean, Lewis... He's, he didn't get priced up where he should. And if it's the same situation as last week, can we expect similar results? Yeah. I mean, if, if James White is out, Rex Burkett is out, I'm locking him in as a mid range RB one in a game. The Patriots should demolish the Bryce Petty led jets. Um, I, I, I love Tom Brady this week. Uh, you know, that's where the jets are most susceptible um, they're allowing the third most uh, fantasy points for drop back. Uh, they rank bottom three and schedule adjusted fantasy points to quarterbacks. Brady's fighting for his fifth MVP, which would tie 
Peyton for most all time. We know Belichick doesn't take his foot off the gas. So I like both him and Deion Lewis. Like you said, Gronk, it's a, it's a weird tight end week. He definitely stands out as the top guy. And then Brandon Cooks is way too cheap. He's like the 16th highest priced wide receiver on DraftKings. That makes no sense. The dude is top five in my wide receiver rankings this week. Uh, in a week where there's a lot of value, uh, I'm definitely going to be p- play- paying up for a few of these guys. Yeah, he's only 6,300 on DraftKings this week. I thought that was an error. Uh, lowest salary he's been all season long. And I think that, you know, if you're playing Brady, you want to do Brady Cooks. I mean, we know Cooks can go loose at any point in time. Uh, very interested in him. He's always makes you nervous for cash. And I don't know at 6,300, I can quite pull that trigger, but uh, an absolute you know, great, great salary for you in your tournaments. All right, Redskins at Giants here. And this is a game where, uh, again, we don't have anything on the line for either of these two teams. How there was some talk that, you know, we could see Davis Webb end up, um, you know, playing some this week, kind of be strange to promote him, but I guess not. Uh, What's your take off on this game in general here? I mean, these, again, this is an absolute nothing game for both teams here. Yeah, nothing to gain here. Just I think it's a really good audition for Kirk Cousins. This could be the third potential season where he gets franchise tagged. Don't see that happening. That would just be absurd. Um, As such, I think we could see Kirk Cousins showing off for a new team. Um, We've seen he he has had a great rapport with Jameson Crowder over the last five or six weeks. We just saw... um, Josh Doxson have a huge, I think it was a 13 target game. Didn't catch many of those receptions, but uh, there's the upside there. Uh, I, I really like this Washington passing game. And on the flip side, I kind of like Wayne Gallman as a very cheap play. I think he's just 4,200 on DK. Very, very good spot for him where he, I think he's led the league in both, or led the league among running backs in both receptions and targets over the last three weeks. He's been a sneaky, good PPR play. Yeah, it's hard to go to Wayne Gallman, though, with all the value out there. I mean, Scott, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm not saying he's a bad play. Like, any other week, you're right. Like, let's play this guy based on the volume. But we haven't even gotten to all the, you know, you know, potential great value spots coming up for guys. And that's going to be tough to pull the trigger there. Do you agree with him on the Redskins? Because I think he, he actually makes some pretty good points there. And we also have the Giants. I mean, talk about DS Disarray. I mean, Eli Apple just got, you know, kicked <laughs> off the team or whatever. That guy stinks. Uh, and, I mean, if, if he was playing over somebody, then God, for you know, who knows who's going to take that spot. I mean, I, I think he makes a pretty good case there for, uh, for Cousins this week. Right. So I, I actually kind of want to spend some time with this game, which I find to be pretty interesting. Uh, I think I think Tyler's on point with Wayne Gallman, 30 carries, 21 targets the last three we- weeks. He ranks 10th among running backs and expected fantasy points over that stretch. He is like the super typical JM to win play of the week. Um, but like <laughs> you were alluding to, uh, um, you know, we're going to have these backup running backs like maybe Brandon Oliver, Malcolm Brown thrust into a real bell cow role, kind of like we've seen with Kenyon Drake, with Damian Williams out. And those are going to be the running backs I'd rather chase instead, though I think he's a fine play. Uh, I like Kirk Cousins, uh, honestly. Uh, so he ranks third among quarterbacks in fantasy points since week three. That's with a decimated offensive line during a significant portion of that stretch. Um, the Giants rank sixth worst in schedule adjusted fantasy points per game, fourth worst in opposing pass rating, sixth worst fantasy points per drop back, dead last pressures per drop back. No Eli Apple, as you alluded to, who is bad. No Janoris Jenkins, who is good. No Landon Collins, who's a top five safety in the NFL. One of the most hard hitting, best tacklers, uh, fantastic in coverage. Their primary tight end defender. Uh, that pushes Ver, uh, Vernon Davis into play. A little risky given recent workload, but this is like the smash spot of all smash spots. Giants uh, giving up the most fantasy points per game to tight ends. Now losing Landon Collins, uh, really beautiful spot. Uh, target volume is a concern. And then I, I want to look at the wide receivers. I'm seeing two very cheap, fantastic wide receiver plays. Uh, one is Roger Lewis, who in a typical week, uh, again, this is not a typical week. I honestly might be going all in on over the past three weeks. Oh. He's 
<laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Uh, over the past three weeks, he totals a league high 32 targets, a league high among wide receivers, 60.3 expected fantasy points. Evan Ingram might not play. Sterling Shepard might not play. Uh, he hasn't done much on this usage, but just I've made enough money in DFS over the years to just know to chase this usage at this salary because I know typically it uh, regresses to the mean. Uh, and he should be in for a big week, even though it's just a middling matchup. Uh, Josh Doxson, however, has a fantastic matchup uh, up against uh, some no-name cornerbacks, uh, Ross Cockrell, Brandon Dixon. Uh, none of them are too uh, uh, concerning at all. Uh, you saw a season-high 25.4 expected fantasy points last week. Uh, just like Roger Lewis, he didn't do too much with it, but it was the second most of the week. Uh, he ranks eighth among wide receivers and expected touchdowns. So he has that really attractive tournament winning upside. Uh, and I could see a big game from him at a low salary. And, and no one's really talking about either of these guys. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with Roger Lewis. Just don't lock him in like every lineup. Like it's <laughs> right, the right. Giants in week 17 week. With, the, with the distinct opportunity that the second half starts and we see Davis Webb in there taking snaps. So like there's there's risk there. I, I like the doxing call though. I, I think that he he's another one who got all those looks last week. You've got to think that that some of those are going to amount to a better output here in this matchup. Okay, okay Cowboys and Eagles next. This is a weird one too because we've got Jerry Jones coming out saying starters are going to play, but the younger players will see more time than usual. Hmm, interesting. Uh What's your initial feeling on the Cowboys side of things here, Scott? Uh, Des Bryant came out just the other day, too, and said, uh, yeah, you know, my production's down, but I'm not old. I love Des. Uh, I'm not giving money back. It was like a weird thing. Like, he was trying to be nice, but then still on the flip side, you know, place blame other places. Um, this is a weird spot here. What do you think with the Cowboys on the road against the Eagles? Uh, yeah, it, it's the potential for a bunch of backups versus a bunch of backups than a completely meaningless game. Uh, no interest for me in anyone on either side of the ball. Um, I don't know. What, what about you, Dan or Tyler? Tyler, what do you think? I mean, we got Zeke Elliott back, um, you know, looked all right last week, didn't get in the end zone, but the yardage was there. I mean, we know this guy can easily explode for multiple touchdowns. And Dallas is a fa road favorite here by a field goal. Again, not that Vegas is crystal clear on what's going to happen this week, but their feeling is uh, Dallas a little bit, you know, I don't say more to play for, but uh, probably going to be having more starters out on the field longer than the Eagles will. Yeah, so it sounds like the Eagles are going to approach us like a preseason game, like the fourth quarter one or the fourth preseason game where say their offense didn't really click in week three and they're going to try and trot them out until they do things right. I think that's something that we could see here, maybe a series or two, maybe into the first quarter. Um, so Foles and all the passing attack is out. The running back committee for the Eagles is kind out. of a, definitely out. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw Corey Clement get a lot more usage as the rookie there, trying to still make a name for himself. I think he's an interesting play, but like a 5% play. Uh, as far as Zeke, though, I mean, I have no interest in paying up for him. This is a week where I'm just paying down at the running back position and I, I just really don't want to play it because we could see a lot of backups here early in this game. Yeah, but you, you, this is what happens, though, sometimes, though, where everybody's going to be using that philosophy in tournaments. And there's a good chance Malcolm Brown just isn't that good and doesn't go off this week. And if he's, you know, you got to look at yourself sometimes and say, he is Malcolm Brown and he's 40% owned. You know, <laughs> <laughs> look ourselves in the mirror like it's not a guarantee it's 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 going to happen like Kenyon Drake I think has a little bit better pedigree than Malcolm Brown especially when you consider Sean Mannion's going to be under center so uh I, I think we have to look into game theory a little bit this week if we've got that kind of heavy ownership and even if Zeke Elliott just play like I think he's going to play if he gets 20 carries and he scores two touchdowns and, and goes for 100 yards like that that's just fine especially if he's at lower ownership and those other guys bust so with cash games, I, I agree with you guys, but I think in the tournament side of things, we shouldn't discount him this week just because he does have masses, massive upside. Well, big news came out in this next game. Browns at Steelers. 
with no Big Ben and no Le'Veon Bell this week, uh, it feels here, Tyler, like Steelers are just going to, you know, hey, we might still beat the Browns with our backups here, but I don't think they believe the Patriots have a chance of losing this week. So, uh, man, how does that change our outlook here? Because I know Juju was uh, definitely excited or exciting for, for some of you guys here before this news broke. Yeah, Juju – he was definitely on my board. I think he's 7,300. I think I might just do a full swap there just out because, I mean, it's kind of tough here to try to play him with much conviction. We've seen Landry Jones be kind of mediocre at best. I'm not super eager to play him. Uh, the running backs, I think I'll fade as well. Uh, there's really nothing here for me to pursue, I think, now, given that, given that news. Yeah, I'm seeing – I mean, this total was low to begin with, Scott. I think it's going to be like 35 – or 30 it's like 36 and a half i'm seeing some places right now open at 41 uh i think this is just a complete and utter dumpster fire game i i think we just stay away you agree yep there we go i like it quick easy let's get some of the ones that do matter like panthers at the falcons all right nobody is sitting out here in this game panthers win the nfc south with a win and a saints loss the falcons need to win this game to make the playoffs um you know people and and i get it like people are play everybody from this game but you also have an incentivized defense here on both of these sides as well so clearly cam you know matt ryan these guys are going to come ready to play but um i think they're going to see heavier ownership than i don't say maybe they deserve but maybe they they potentially should have um given the fact that, uh, you know, it is week 17. We never know what's going to happen. What's your thoughts here, Tyler? Is this, is this an all-out game stack for you or what? It initially was, but like you said, we're going to see a ton of ownership go this game this direction. I really, really, really like Julio here. think he's going to be in another blow-up spot. Um, but I might start backing off my ownership now, now that we're seeing a little bit of um, how this week's unfolding. Um, just a lot of ownership is going to be centered toward it. I think it might be a good game to sprinkle in. There's still some really strong plays here, but I don't know if you want to make it a part of your core. What do you think, Scott? Um, thoughts, Panthers, Falcons here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We can get into game theory a little bit later, I guess, but just looking at the plays uh, Julio Jones definitely stands out to me as uh, in a week where there should be a lot of uh, extra salary. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to go that direction. Carolina for the last five weeks of the season ranks dead last and schedule adjusted fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. Uh, they're giving up the most fantasy points to wide, res- uh, wide, res- wide receivers on the outside. Um, he ranks third among all wide receivers and expected fantasy points per game. I know his volume doesn't seem like it's that good, but he's also like Mike Clay does a thing on uh, OTD expected touchdowns. Uh, I just started doing the same thing. Uh, by my calculations, he should have 6.6 more touchdowns than he actually has. So he's gotten extremely unlikely. Uh, In a game with everything on the line, I could see Matt Ryan really giving him another uh, hefty workload. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, I think, is probably the most expensive running back I'm willing to pay up for this week, and it just makes too much sense. Uh, We have seen an expanded role as a runner, as well as better efficiency in recent weeks, ranking 12th best in yards per carry since week nine. Uh, but still, his receiving output makes up 75% of his total fantasy points this season in PPR leagues. And Atlanta is allowing the second most receiving fantasy points per game to opposing running backs after allowing the most last season. Uh, and that's just regular season. That's not even including the postseason where uh, the smartest uh, coach in the NFL uh, basically had James White as their uh, MVP through the air. Uh, so it just makes too much sense in this matchup. I like McCaffrey. I like Julio Jones quite a bit. And there's some ancillary plays you can look at as well. Yeah. And I, I'm going to throw Olsen out there too, as a pivot off of Gronk. If, cause he's going to garner all the ownership. And we saw two weeks ago, Olsen can still have those absolute monster games. Um, didn't do it last week. And I think that's going to drive a bunch of ownership back off, but he's still one of the top targets that that Cam Newton has. And I think from an ownership play, he's interesting. Uh, Bengals at Ravens. Uh, Ravens need a win. They win and they clinch a playoff spot here. And, uh, you know, the Bengals, they've kind of checked out, played well last week uh, against Detroit. Clearly the last game that Marvin Lewis is is going to uh, coach this team. 
And looking at the uh, Vegas outlook on this one here real quick, I am, uh, where are we got? A 40-point spread with Baltimore favored by 10 points. So they think that the Ravens come to play here. But Baltimore's never a team that we're really excited about. But I, I, it's interesting. I was researching uh, Joe Flacco here, and Dude's thrown seven touchdowns over the last four weeks. Only one interception has been super steady. I'm not playing Joe Flacco, but hey, he's peaking at the right time going into the playoffs. At least we can say that. Yeah, for sure. We've seen him go, I think, for 18 plus fantasy points four weeks straight. It's been very steady. I mean, he's not seeing massive outings. Like, I think his ceiling has been like 22 points, but he's just been very steady week after week. I uh, really like the play of Alex Collins here this week with them being 10 point favorites. Collins has been a guy I've been going to heavily. He's averaged 16.3 carries over the la Ravens last eight games. He's also hauled in 21 of 28 targets. Cincinnati just struggling with defense with defensive injuries and in the linebacking core, the secondary, just all over the place. Over the last four weeks, they've allowed the second most fantasy points opposing running backs. I think Collins runs crazy over them this week. And I like bringing it back with AJ Green. Uh, he's priced way, way too low, 6,300. And I had thought the Bengals had nailed it in prior to last week, and I was wrong. Green went for six, 81 and zero on 10 targets. Wouldn't be surprising to see Cincinnati try to play spoiler for Baltimore, their divisional rival. Um, the loss of Jimmy Smith just opens up this play for green for me. Just really like him here. He's the same price as both golden Tate and Brandon cooks. I think both those guys should draw more ownership, um, considering they're in plus matchups. They have the green number, uh, in their OPR rank, um, on DraftKings website. And I think green's just a very strong play. Severely yeah. underpriced. It's just too cheap. Secondary. Yeah. Too cheap. Uh, and last week that game, that line smelled fishy when they were only like three point dogs or whatever it was against Detroit. It didn't make sense. And we kind of saw that play out, but uh, I, I like that kind of ruined the Ravens season um, here in the last game, potentially Marvin Lewis's swan song could be a bit closer than we think. Uh, Bill's dolphins um, here, Scott, again, bills need to win, you know, fighting for a playoff spot. Dolphins not playing for much. One name, and again, I know you're not paying up for running back, but uh, LaShawn McCoy here this week versus the Dolphins. Um, another guy who I think they're going to lean heavily on. I think he's going to score a touchdown. He has in four of the last five games he's played against the Miami Dolphins. And uh, again, getting back to the game theory angle, ownership's not going to be driven to these guys. It's probably going to be to AJ or to Julio Jones, Keenan Allen, Tom Brady. Maybe he's an interesting tournament option if you want to mix things up. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not really on him. Uh, just where value is elsewhere, and also I think, like honestly, Kenyon Drake is just as fine of a play. Um, he's played on 243 of his team's 256 snaps over the past four weeks, uh, fifth in running back opportunities, um, and Buffalo's just been the the best defense to target with running backs this season. Of course, that's if Damian Williams is out, but I know Tyler's on LaShawn McCoy quite a bit, so I'll let him take that one. Yeah, I just really like the matchup here considering how terrible the Miami linebackers have been. They've allowed the fourth most receptions to opposing backs. We've seen Shady catch a ton of balls here with um, Tyrod under center, and they've allowed the sixth most fantasy points to opposing running backs. Just think he's a really good play. Um, he's had... 24 touches against them just two weeks ago, picking up 25.6 DraftKings points. Really like McCoy here for a couple of the reasons that you mentioned, Dan, where low ownership should not see a ton of um, ownership, mostly just because of the roster construction. He should go low owned. Yeah, um, we got to get moving on these Saints Buccaneers. Uh, hey, Saints are going to be playing this one all the way out. Keep your eye on Michael Thomas. He didn't practice again. Um, did play last week. Didn't get a ton of looks. But uh, this is an interesting one um, for, you know, the Saints offense, of course. Drew Brees, only three over 300 yards twice this season. We'll see if he gets there against this awful Buccaneers secondary. Um, Jaguars-Titans is the one we got to talk about here, guys. Are you buying what Doug Marone is selling uh, in regards to him saying we're going all out in this game, Scott, against the Titans? Uh, I don't – I think I have to. So, really what I'm doing is I'm just – uh, putting like an asterisk next to Keelan Cole and D.D. Westbrook uh, and just noting that they're a little riskier than the otherwise would be. Uh, that said, I still like Cole quite a bit, who's been 
uh, a top five wide receiver for fantasy over the past four or five weeks. Uh, Tennessee ranks 10th worst in fantasy points per game to outside wide receivers. Um, and I think people are going to be scared off. Uh, but for the most part, I, I trust what he's saying. You agree with that, Tyler? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> so I think they'll be quick to pull the team. Like we, Injuries are prevalent in the NFL. I think there's no reason for them to try to get one in week 17 where he'll just be constantly scrutinized. What if it happened to Fournette? What if it happened to Blake Bortles? And lowers their preseason or their postseason hopes there's two things here I, I love Jacksonville live in Jacksonville Jags fan uh I don't think Tom Coughlin's going to let him pack it in this week you know that does not fit his mentality and I think he wants them to go out and play now with that said if you listen to it he said we're going to play to win he didn't say we're going to play our starters four quarters you could easily say that make that line and play your guys a half and hopefully you're up 21 points and you kind of take your foot off the accelerator a little bit. And, and Or you get down 21 points and you say, okay, that's it. We're going to take Bortles. I feel if it's a close game, they're going to keep their their you know their main guys in there. But um, I, I still think there is a chance that, you know, Coughlin's influence is just going to be too much and, and Marone's going to play these guys all out. But I wouldn't be playing Cam Robinson. They're obviously not going to play Marquise Lee. I wouldn't play Leonard Fournette this week, but uh, all those guys are out. But I will say this much. If you if you want to get frisky in tournaments, uh, look to some Bortles, Keelan Cole combinations, maybe even D.D. Westbrook. Tom Savage, don't forget, he threw for 365 yards versus this defense not that long ago. Jimmy Garoppolo, 381. Jared Goff, 301. Uh, Bortles, we've seen him put up big numbers, and I, I think he's – really sneaky in tournaments this week if you think that it's going to go all out so throwing that out there uh all right uh next couple of games here we've got chiefs at broncos uh man uh we've got no alex smith here i don't think we need to pay down to patrick mahomes here scott but some people i think are going to want to do that after the success of nick Foles, the success of drew stanton last week i can see some people giving mahomes a, a look here what do you think yeah, I'm with you. I don't think we need to pay down for him either, but Tyler, I know, loves him this week. So I'll, <laughs> I was I'll about let to him... start raising my hand real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. super eager to play some Chiefs this week. Um, they just open up so much if you want to pay down to the position. Love Patrick Mahomes. He was our highest graded quarterback in the preseason. Absolutely tore it up. It's very high upside, very, very high floor as well, I think, with his rushing potential. Um, just on the road different. at the Broncos? I mean, they're not sitting there secondary here, are they? I mean, they've, as far as they've allowed the second most passing touchdowns yeah. on the season. They have, they've been a shell of their former self yeah. for whatever reason. I still can't put my finger on it, um, but I don't it's know. Cause, it's because uh, opposing offenses are starting in the red zone on every drive. <laughs> That's, That's true. They've had some really <laughs> weird numbers that defense this year in terms of you know, touchdowns allowed, I think, versus yardage or, or, or ranking. Scott, you might be able to speak to that. A yeah, little bit. They're, they're third in passing touchdowns allowed, and they're also third best in yards per drive. I think yeah. it's just a function of their offense being so bad that uh, it allows opposing offenses to just become be so close to the end zone, uh, be more efficient. Um, but uh, yeah, Tyler, you can continue with what you were saying. I mean, like that <laughs> offense is still really, really bad. So Mahomes could have a, a lot of opportunities inside the red zone. Yeah, and that spells big news for uh, or big opportunities for Demetrius Harris, a guy I've absolutely loved. Have him on almost every one of my dynasty teams. Um, he's just been roadblocked by Travis Kelsey, a stud. Kelsey had his best game of the year against the Broncos. This Denver defense has been um, beaten by opposing tight ends all season long. I love that stack for like. I think it's like 6K. <laughs> you can do so many things with that. That's how you, that's when you play Zeke and McCoy with those guys at, uh, at 5% ownership and hope that, that they go yes. for two or three touchdowns apiece. Um, I, will, I will say, I really like the idea of playing Mahomes on FanDuel's Superflex League where you can pay up for other ah, stuff. That way. I think that's a go. great way to get some, get some. I love, in, love yeah. paying down in the Superflex at the quarterback spot on, on FanDuel. Fun game over there. Uh, Raiders and Chargers, Scott. Um, I mean, again, I think Rivers to Keenan is just pretty sure thing this week, especially if Melvin Gordon doesn't go and he hasn't practiced at all this week. So uh, thoughts on that and Brandon Oliver, is he viable this week uh, if, if Gordon's out? 
Uh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, matchup looks good on, on paper, uh, for, for Keenan Allen, you know, Oakland hasn't really been able to stop anyone this season. Uh, I like Antonio Gates quite a bit. He saw eight targets uh, with a six eighty one one line last week. Oakland's allowing the fifth most fantasy points per game to tight ends. His, uh, salary hasn't really risen too much. Um, we I'm, also... I'm on records for saying I'm nervous. I, I, I hit the, I hit the lottery line him last week and I'm happy. <laughs> I'm going to take my funds and I'm not going to parlay it again. I just don't trust it two weeks in a row. I'm just going to, going to throw that out there. I, I get it. Um, uh, I, I just want to say regarding Brandon Oliver. Uh, so over the past two seasons, we've seen eight different running backs who are held under 100 carries for the season, still finish with at least 20 fantasy points in week 17. That's some like really gross names on that list. Like Dewan Harris, Jonathan Grimes, Sean Drawn. Um, and really what that is, is it's a function of like having fresh legs this late in the season up against depleted def- uh, defenses, injury plague defenses, uh, and just, you know, a lack of competition for running back touches. Uh, Brandon Oliver, I think, is is a probably a fringe RB1 this week. And look at his salary. He's, he's not the 12th most expensive running back uh, on either side. So he's going to be a top player for me. 49ers at Rams. We've already said his name a couple of times. Malcolm Brown. Uh, we've got McVay coming out saying no Gurley, no Aaron Donald, uh, pretty much no starters, no Jared Goff. Um, and Malcolm Brown's going to command so much ownership here. It is against the 49ers here, Tyler, who, you know, for the better part of the year struggled versus the run. I mean, you don't have to sell me too hard on him, but sell me a little bit more on, on why I should eat this chalk. Uh, I think I think I'd rather pivot away from the Malcolm Brown shock. Uh, there's a re- lot of really good cheap plays we've seen since Reuben Foster's been back in this defense. They've allowed they've done they've done a lot better job defending the run. In fact, it's been a lot easier to pass on them as such. Um, but I'm not interested in Sean Mannion or any of that passing attack. But I am interested in some Marquise Goodwin, some Jimmy G. I think they could have a good game here against some backups for the Rams. Both those guys are viable plays in my book. Absolutely. I mean, San Francisco favored by three here uh, on the road against the Rams Uh, and Jimmy G. We saw what he did last week. I mean, that was the game I needed to see from him against, you know, arguably the best defense in the league, Scott. And he he did it. I mean, he was phenomenal once again. And, you know, I don't see a reason not to buy him here this week. I mean, they're they're obviously looking towards next season, trying to build momentum. And the dude is playing with crazy amount of confidence. And with no Aaron Donald, I mean, there goes, you know, a, a huge chunk of that pass rush for the Rams. And uh, it's hard. I think Garoppolo's sneaky this week. I don't think anybody's going to talk about him. I don't think he's sneaky at all. I think you he's know? a glaring top play. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we'll see. He just gashed the best pass defense of the league uh, and a top 10 pass defense this past decade. Uh, he's our second highest graded pass over the last four weeks up against backups. I think he's uh, – maybe he's not going to be highly owned, but I think he should be. Here's the problem. DraftKings, you can get Tom Brady at 6.8 or you can get Garoppolo at 6.7. Right. You can get Cam right. Newton at 6.8. You can get Rivers for less. You can get Wilson for 200 more. Like, I don't think people right. are ready to buy that number on him, and that's why I think he'll be, he'll be more sneaky rather than like, yeah, I think everybody realizes this guy's good, but they're really ready to put their money where their mouth is at that level, and I'm not sure they're going to. So uh, last game, Arizona versus Seattle. Then we'll get some of our uh, studs and duds here. Uh, I, I think Russell Wilson, people sleep on this game here a little bit. And who knows? I mean, if it, what's the scenario here, Tyler? Seattle, will they know their fate? Is there a chance their fate could be in their hands by the time this game comes? Is it If Atlanta loses, they have to win that game to make the playoffs? They need a Seattle win and an Atlanta loss or a tie. So, yes, it, it'll hinge on Atlanta's performance. Okay, uh, so th- there is a chance, though, that Atlanta loses. Pretty good chance. Yep. And hard for me not to get excited about Russell Wilson in a potential yeah. playoff deciding game against an Arizona team on the road that's got zero to play for right now. Yeah, so- Russell Wilson has been money. Um, I'm not going to let recency bias over his last two weeks fade me from him at all. Super cheap this week. Uh, ridiculously cheap, in fact. Um, I love the call here of playing Russ against this Cardinals team. The run game, uh, 
the Cardinals have allowed the second fewest rushing yards this season. Uh, it's inexistent with that offensive line. Um, yeah, forget about it. Uh, just Russ Baldwin. Uh, love that. Love that play right there. Uh, are you are you Russ or are you Garoppolo there, Barrett? Uh, I'd be more Russ probably, but uh, I will say it's close. Yeah, I, I think that's a really interesting spot. All right, we went through all the games. Uh, let's get to some studs here real quick. Again, Tyler, we can make these a little bit condensed. We got about 10 minutes left. And uh, I'll give you the quarterback. Uh, who's your stud this week? My stud's going to be Cam Newton this week, like we've been mentioning. Uh, this is one of the few games where we could see a lot of heavy ownership. And it's one of the few games where both teams are going to be fighting hard for that victory. Atlanta has allowed the fifth most passing completions and eighth most fantasy points opposing quarterbacks this year. They've allowed multiple passing touchdowns to four of their last five opponents. And what really makes Cam Newton appealing is his rushing upside. The Atlanta defense has allowed the third most rushing yards to opposing quarterbacks this year. Newton has back-to-back 14 carry games. I just think Newton has a very high floor and a variable ceiling where he could have his, one of those monster type outings and making him a very great GPP play. Yeah, I think he's cash viable too with that nice floor on that run game. Um, Scott, your stud this week, quarterback? Uh, yeah, it's Tom Brady, who I kind of already made the case for. Uh, uh, of course, Deion Lewis is a great play, but uh, we also know Belichick doesn't really take his foot off the gas ever. Um, and then values, it was kind of a toss up between Kirk Cousins and Matthew Stafford in equally dream matchups um, against a Giants defense without Landon Collins at home against Green Bay, who ranks third worst in opposing pass rating, fourth worst in fantasy points per drop back. Concern with Detroit is uh, they might give Stafford some rest, but uh, I do like those guys quite a bit. Uh, obviously, if you didn't watch the show a little bit earlier, Tyler is just excited about. Patrick Mahomes, he's his value play. Uh, and did, uh, you've got Derek Carr as your dud. Scott Rowland, Dak Prescott as his dud. I, I think those both make some sense. I don't think a lot of people are, are looking at either of those two this week. Nothing to play for in that situation. Uh, let's go to the – I want to talk about the value running back here for the Titans that you have, Tyler. Yes, I'm super into Derrick Henry this week. Like I said, I'm not necessarily buying this Jacksonville narrative that they're going to play their starters the entire game. Um, Even if they are, the Jaguars have been a run funnel defense, just inviting opponents to run against them, except for Le'Veon Bell for whatever reason that one week. Uh, But Jacksonville ranks sixth worst in yards per carry allowed on the season. They rank top 10 in most fantasy points allowed to opposing backs. And we could see Henry possibly going against some backups here. Should see the majority of touches here in a game where could be against a lot of backups just really like the idea of henry fresh legs demarco murray has a torn mcl there's no reason for tennessee to play demarco murray here hopefully they don't and they let their fresh horse and derrick henry get a ton of touches this week yeah tennessee is this is interesting you know malarkey former coach there for jacksonville for just one season he's terrible like best thing they ever did was get rid of that guy um and like i agree like there's no reason to play murray here and If you look back to that game week two, Henry was a beast against Jacksonville that week. He had a monster, monster outing. And I think he's going to represent maybe the chalkiest play on the slate, um, which is interesting, you know, going against, uh, you know, Jacksonville who's going to apparently play their starters. Are you in on Derrick Henry too, Scott? Yeah, absolutely. My, my value running back is just all of the value running backs, Brandon Oliver, Malcolm Brown, Giovanni Bernard, Derek Henry, all fantastic smash plays. Uh, if a few of these guys like 40% own, there's, there's still a few more to like as well. And be a little bit careful with Gio. It looks like Mixon did practice today Ooh. and oh. yeah, uh, he could be one guy that uh, we're going to want to take off that list if he ends up getting a start. So, uh, although he's been a, you know, another hundred yard game for him last week. So um, your duds, just for the record, again, Mike Davis, don't play him. Uh, I don't think he's any good, not a good spot against Arizona, like Tyler laid out. And then you're, you're not into Jordan Howard this week here, Scott. You yeah, can say no, no thanks to him. No, he's just been too boomer boomer bust and uh he's up against minnesota who's been the top defense uh against fantasy running backs this season okay scott you've got stud julio but dot 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 what's after the dot 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 uh it 
I don't really remember. I think uh, Tyler just beat me to it, and I, I didn't know what else to say. But, uh, but yeah, Julio Jones is easily my top uh, wide receiver of the week. Yeah, uh, Tyler, make the case. I mean, you don't need to make the case. I mean, I'm yeah. not a lock-in guy, but he might just be the lock and load with all the value you have on this slate. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I know what I was going to say. Okay, let's uh, go for it. But there, there's there's some top like high priced wide receivers who I also think are extremely good values this week. Uh, like Brandon Cooks, the 16th highest priced wide receiver. Uh, Jarvis Landry is the 17th highest priced wide receiver on DraftKings. He ranks fifth among all wide receivers and expected fantasy points per game. Uh, so I love Julio Jones. There's also a few guys in that top tier who are also like stupid values. Uh, you can chase Larry Fitzgerald. I think uh, was one of those. Marvin Jones, but anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Um, Tyler, um, again, you're on Julio. Uh, we don't need to go there. Let, let's quickly yeah. get into Gronk. You know, he's a, a great play this week, but I hear there's like there's a a big bonus he's got lined up this week or something. Am I reading this right? Yeah, Evan Silva tweeted this out earlier uh, that Gronk is able to earn a two million dollar bonus if he either catches eleven balls or picks up one hundred sixteen yards. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a reason to target him, um, but it's just something that will be passed around heavily this week. And New England, like we've mentioned earlier, they're going to put their foot on the gas pedal. They need the win here. Gronk went for six, 83 and two against the Jets earlier in the season. Jets have allowed the seventh most fantasy points opposing tight ends, third most touchdowns. Gronk exposure, never a bad thing, especially when uh, there's some incentives involved. Yeah, I mean, I don't care how rich you are. Two million bucks is two million bucks. You'll take it. Uh, uh, lastly, Scott, give me some Charles Clay love here. Uh, yeah, so Miami ranks second worst in schedule adjusted fantasy points per game, second worst in actual fantasy points per game, second most, second highest percentage of receiving fantasy points allowed to the tight end position. You've seen 10 and nine targets the last two weeks. The team's fighting for the playoffs like him quite a bit also want to mention Delaney Walker who we did not talk about for whatever reason always way too cheap on DraftKings he ranks second among tight ends uh 16th among all receivers and expected fantasy points over the last six or seven weeks of the season yeah you could play him and Gronk together for sure whatever you do don't tweet at Scott about how you love Cameron Braid because the first (laughs) two words are about the first uh Six words on our sheet are screw him officially dead to me. So uh, not a fan of Cameron Bray, but we are just, we are just about uh, out of time here, guys. Uh, Pro football focus. I want to say this much about the job that you guys do. Um, Just amazing. Not only on the pro stuff, but I don't think you guys get enough love for all the, the college ratings that you do and the research you do on college players and Tyler, like, you know, it's going to be draft season here for most of the teams in the league, everybody who doesn't make the playoffs. And you guys do a really good job kind of breaking those guys down as well. And, uh, you know, I think it's a nice feature you guys have. Yeah, we've got a tremendous team of guys there that analyze every game, go through all the stats and put together some terrific draft profiles of every fantasy relevant player coming into the draft. Uh, I can't wait to get involved and uh, dig into this a bit more now that DFS season's winding down. I know, like, uh, you guys can now, do, like, I'm kind of jealous, because I'm, like, love the draft. Like, it's one of my favorite things of the year, and you guys can jump into that now, because you're football guys. I've got to go into daily fantasy basketball, daily fantasy golf. Uh, I've got baseball for, like, the next seven months, <laughs> so I, I don't get the fun of the NFL draft with daily fantasy. Can we add some daily fantasy draft? That would be wonderful. <laughs> um fellas uh, appreciate you guys all season long jumping on with us if you're not a subscriber over there at pro football focus i hope you give him a look uh he is scott barrett and tyler beaker thank you so much fellas for the job that you've done i am dan bach um of rotogrinders.com again uh, if you haven't heard we've got a special promo over at yahoo this week 50 cent entry hey no matter what you finish last in the tournament. You're going to double your money. You're going to make a dollar on your entry. So we've got guaranteed overlay and a thousand dollars first place prize in this one on a 50 cent entry. So if you want to play that, go look in the banner ad over on our homepage at Roto Grinders, and you can be in that tournament coming up 
this week 17 at Yahoo DFS. Well, uh, thanks again for checking us out tonight and all season long. We love it. It's been like year three or four with Pro Football Focus, and uh, we hope to do many more with them. For Tyler and for Scott, I'm Dan Bach, wishing you good luck tonight and in the playoffs, and we will see you.